Okay, Walter's heading out, but just remember this Tesla red and it is gorgeous. Wow, fantastic. Look at this leather too, wow. And chrome, chrome, chrome. Rear air conditioning. Rear defroster too. Oh, very creative solution on the uh, struts to keep the... The struts to keep the back up are actually really well done. I appreciate this. Um, and you use four struts. Will it stay in the position you put it? Oh, that's a nice close too. And the plate underneath, what country is this plate? Uh, Munich. I, I got ah. Interesting having the radio down there. It really keeps the dash clean. And you have the clock in place of the ashtray. That is a wonderful accessory. That's a 240 clock. Oh, the early 240s. All right, thank you so much. This car is from Puerto Rico. And Walter's, uh, Walter's had it for, I think, four decades or so before he met his wife and went to college and all of that stuff. So she gorgeous. The car. The car is gorgeous. Unfortunately, we're going to have to write him up for uh, public exposure. His nuts are showing. <laughs> Welcome to the annual Volvo Sports America picnic. This is Irvine Regional Park in the city of Orange, California. You know, I never really appreciated Volvos until like now that I see this in person, I, I hear the stories of it. It's fascinating. The beginning of that sentence made me so anxious. Like that? I thought we were gonna have to kick you out of here for those offensive words. Oh. Wow. I love this baby book. There seems more photos of like family and friends. Look okay. at Would you, would you? Oh, this is the baby book. And last but certainly not least, this. Hey, I like this exhaust too. Arson and Anna. It's the same car, Brett. Yeah, I know. And that's good enough. Yeah, nobody's lined up at all. Okay. All right, Brett, let's finally begin this video. Brett, I want you to say welcome to the Volvo Sports America annual picnic. Welcome to the Volvo Annual Sports okay. Picnic. Welcome to Volvo's Annual Picnic. SoCal VSA Annual Picnic. Well, welcome. Welcome. <laughs> yeah. Welcome to VSA Annual Picnic. In Southern California, coming at you live from the Irvine Regional Park, Brett has just taken ownership of this P1900. Fantastic car, Brett. What do you think? What was your first impression as you owned this car? Good purchase. Good purchase. Yeah, I'd say it's a pretty all right investment eh, if you're into the plastic fantastic persuasion. Well, let's take a look around and we'll show the folks and show the cars. It looks like you're getting toasty in there because it's a hot day today in the city of Orange. No, no, please allow me. After all, money buys influence. <laughs> Grace. Grace is a labradoodle unlike any other. So here's our friends, their floral prints, their straw hats, the ambrosia salads, and hopefully some sunscreen and some shade. Lots of laughter. Brett, what did you drive today? I drove a 122 Volvo Amazon. Does it have a name? It's got it. It's, the name is Genevieve. Fantastic. How many miles on the odometer, Brett? Like less than 500. Dude, I think it's under 100 still. The car is so clean. So from this 9 a.m. start through now, one of the first arrivals of the day was Roger. He just completed from Wednesday, today's Saturday, he just completed his north of Alaska, or north to Alaska solo drive. Roger took Old Blue, his 68 122. This is a car you've seen on the channel from work that we've done together uh, late last year or even before then. And it um, made it all the way there and all the way back. Fantastic. Just shows you the durability of these cars. 68 for the Amazons, if you're um, noticing year to year differences. The reflectors here on the rear started there in 68. Now, this is Tracy from Long Beach. Uh, Roger's in Northridge. Tracy and Pam, Pam's not with us today, but Tracy's got the 445. 
The duet. The duet mechanically shares a lot with the P1900, and that's in the... Um, not the cluster, not the dash. The steering wheel's the same. And uh, there's a lot of similar bits and pieces here and there. Uh, the B16 engine, the um, transmission using the four, the three speed, four speed, whatever it was. Um, four speed. Three speed was the earlier H pattern. I don't remember what year this is, but he's running a Holly Sniper EFI conversion, which is actually really kind of neat. And the park is filled up today, so it's kind of fun being able to bring these cars to all the people here in Irvine Regional. Big park. It's toasty, Brett. Toasty. Uh, Genevieve, you know, Genevieve was the car that put me through a couple years of work in Orange County, and that's me showing a lot of restraint because it put me through a lot. Um, but, you know, she's beautiful at the end of it. Would you open the hood for us, Brent? I want to show underneath. Um, and have a look-see dooksie. Yum. Go ahead and hook your peepers on that chrome valve cover, everybody. That was a valve cover that I won from a slow rolling festival when I, I gave it to this project as my little like finishing touch. At some point, I should be just making plaques so I can rivet somewhere and be like, built by David Bellow, because I'm only going to do, I don't know, X amount of builds in my whole life. But I don't know. I don't want it to sound too self-important. I'm just a guy. Just trying to, I'm a guy trying to be a mensch. Okay, you know Jarvis. Jarvis has some sweet new trim rings. What? Some bling. Gone fishing. <laughs> Jarvis has some bling on the wheels here. And um, I think that's a really great touch. In 86, they went to plastic hubcaps. Uh, Brett, one hand either side of the trim and then push straight down. Hmm. Slap, uh, bounce it, yeah. Okay, just do it about three times fast. No need to slam it, it is just a tight fit. Bada boom. And that's how the paint chips. <laughs> anyway, this car, uh, yeah, in 86, the 240s did the trim along the side. I don't want to make this a 30 minute video, but um, yeah, e codes on this. You know the P1900, Mr. David Hunt. Actually, recovery's doing really, really well. He's, uh, he's got a follow up surgery coming up, but he really was feeling good this week and drove his car today himself and we followed along to make sure that he was good <laughs> those glasses are fabulous <laughs> can't get enough of that with the hat too gone fishing i said uh this is greg and diane from riverside county they will talk bad about me <laughs> uh they uh, have two really interesting things about this car that i think no one else here has power steering Portable air conditioning compressor. So the compressor is actually up here. You see it poking in right there. There's the compressor. Right behind the grill. Wow. And the power steering is from a 164 setup. So you have the 164 pump, some adapted brackets, the unit here, and then the steering linkage. Why don't we poke underneath? Let's see if we can find what's going on with that steering linkage. So cool that they made it work. Uh, this was stuff that was done, I think he said in the 70s or who knows when, but it's a while ago. And what is this? Is that a cruise control that I see? Because it might be a choke. This could be an electric choke servo. It's hooked up right to the chokes on the SU carbs. Fascinating. So uh, this car is with which transmission? Overdrive 1966. Beautiful car. Uh, we have a huge turnout today of the 1800s. Uh, this cream white, fabulous color. Jensen, two Jensens today. This is the first of them. This is Tom, and Tom has all beautiful, complete, original appearances to everything, as far as I know. I'm also noticing, look at the rear seats on the Jensens. In addition to having, the hockey puck trim lasted through 66, but the Jensens got the C-pillar. Actually, this would be the, yeah, if this is B, this would be C the C-pillar trim uh, or emblem that these don't have. And then in addition to that, he still has original seatbelts. I think he's got, there's the overdrive switch here on the right. This beautiful, beautiful green is uh, Sharon. And Sharon is the owner. Uh, Sharon is the parent of Grace. Sharon's from New York originally. And she is somebody that I'm so impressed by her uh, understanding and appreciation of her car and by that I mean she has both of the 1800 books one is Bill Webb's book and then the other 1800 book is the English publication I don't recall the name of it oh her blanket reminds me of my blanket except I got cardinals on her and she's got cats anyway beautiful car 
um, also. And this is a 67. 67. And Ted, Ted Broff, our leader. Any words for the public, Ted? I'm not the leader. <laughs> You're the coordinator, so. Leader. <laughs> yeah. How long you own this car? Since 77. 1977. And we saw you last at Davis. Right. When you were tinkering uh, under the dash, which is. I was. It's the way it goes. <laughs> I remember that. Uh, but it was it was always great to like catch up at events and see that you drive this car everywhere, and yeah. I I love that about it's these. Got almost three hundred thousand. Three hundred thousand. I'm noticing you have tint on the rear glass, the yeah. sides. Yeah. So that must really help keep the temperatures down. I like the wooden shift knob. There's a, a cool little center console. That's neat. And then the uh, Frigi King. Yeah. Above it, and is it hooked up with a modern? Yep, there's the modern. Is that a Sandin style? Type compressor. Yeah. Is that using Bob's brackets or no? Bob brackets. Bob Bob Foltz from the rest of the kid Pennsylvania. Is from Mike okay, this here, where the choke cable is attached to, the same one exists on Greg's 1800. What is that? Is that a choke? This control. This yeah. Chokes. And what is the vacuum servo unit to the left of it? This breaks. No, no, no. The, I'm sorry. Maybe it's not vacuum, but there's the wash. Is that a washer motor? Oh, this? Yeah. Washer oh, motor. Oh, see, being on the bracket, I assumed it was connected Vintage to the choke. washer motor. So that's how it was on these. Yeah. Amazing. Okay, I learned something it's new today. Even. Oh, something else to notice about the Jensen's. The cowl trim here. This is like a, what we can call a mini version of the 122s. Hey, look, a Del Sol. No, thanks. And over here is uh, the way that they also looked on the Jensen's. They had like a more, it's almost like a snow scoop. Cool. All right. Now, this car, you, it's my daily driver. It's got glitter paint. It's got 203,000 miles. The uh, orange interior, which is like a three out of 10. The exterior is probably a four out of 10, you know, because there's no major dents, but it's definitely got, you know, she's had some love and love taps and been worked on here and there. So uh, this is a car that, um, I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't have a lot to say, but anyway, I love my pumpkin orange. Got my mane and tail, six speed. Keep it down, would you? And uh, Rolling Magazine, one of my acting books. Uh, this is a brochure I got from Cindy from Davis. Uh, Cindy, if you're watching, hello. I think you were trying to sell that 122. Good luck with sale. Hope you find a good home for it. Uh, three generations of Volvo dealer family, if I have that right. 850 Turbo, this is Bob Workman. Bob Workman is... Uh, owner of Workman Auto, and he is uh, a frequent for the VSA club. This color is gorgeous too, wow. Might just be my rose tinted glasses, but um, oftentimes shop owners tend to neglect their own vehicles. Bob seems to have found a clean example for himself. I'm curious, and I don't think this is the case, but I've seen this happen before where customers have nice cars, don't appreciate them. They need some amount of work that is not worth it for a car of this age. So if you have like an 850 turbo with maybe a blown head, or like a T5R yellow with a blown head, or just a R, uh, platinum, whatever it is, any of those front wheel drive, this is kind of like, it goes under the radar for most automotive enthusiasts and a big chunk of Volvo enthusiasts too, but somebody like a shop owner would get that opportunity, car gets towed in and then they say, well, this is how much it needs for work. And the owner, the uh, current owner might go, well, maybe I'll just sell it. And then you can end up with something beautiful like this. Not the case, but. I got to grab some photos before, ah, before you leave. Hold on. Thank you, Sharon. You're welcome. Nice meeting you. Likewise. And Grace too. Hi, Grace. Bye, Grace. <laughs> Bye, sweet thing. Wow, brown seats? I didn't even notice. Beautiful. Yeah. Well, that's what rebuilt this one. Mm -mm -mm. Everybody loves this face. Oh, I love these cars. What's up, guys? Look at that, man. Oh! Right? I know, right? <laughs> That's Bruce! I know! Bruce! It's a big compliment you're using this on our cars. <laughs> yeah, I thought it was like, I was so lucky. I wanted to. Good sounding little car.
carrying on. Uh, we've actually lost a few spots since the last take because people have been leaving. So Jarvis is gone, Dave in 1900, the White Knight is gone. This is a Jensen owned by Casey and it's been in the family a long time. And the wonderful discovery is that this car was painted in 2009 by the same feller that, that sold me the 122 eponymously named Bruce. Bruce Adams of Salton Sea Beach. He was a reputable painter, uh, still alive. He's 84 and you've seen him in some of my videos and we uh, see him on occasion. I was actually really happy to be able to tell Casey here, who is probably in his late 70s or early 80s as well, that uh, Bruce is still very much alive and kicking and I can get them back in touch. So it's fun to do that kind of thing, you know, put old friends in touch. So this car, it's beautiful, beautiful red paint. You know, it's just, it's aging excellently and the, um, the quality of the paint job is really nice. So I'm impressed and I'm pleased. Um, wonderful car and I love the bongos on the hat shelf. And then that is Casey's father's hat. His father saw this in I think the late sixties or early seventies at a dealership as he was driving by, turned around and bought it. So it's, um, he calls it a two family car, maybe two generations, but it seems like a one family car. Um, is that a 76 ball? Yep. From back in the day. So it's gorgeous, really. Good example of Jensen wheels. And what's this here? Good Roads Automobile Club, Southern California. That's really great. Good history. My 63 P1800. How sweet it is. I love that. See, if you buy a car that has something like this on it, I think that's worth keeping on as part of the story of the vehicle. There is a very fascinating car two spaces over, but this very beautiful P220, which is what we call the chassis for the Amazon wagons. There's no roof rack, no holes. And what is up with this gorgeous paint job? This is Arson and Anna from Moscow. They live in California, here in uh, LA now. And they, uh, this is their first car when they came over here. Um, what a great first car. I mean, what else can I say? Uh, beautiful, beautiful work all around. Still has the rear window trim too. So whenever it was repainted, if it was repainted, that is um, a nice, nice touch. Let's have a look inside here. When they got it, it needed a lot of work, suspension and stuff like that. But it seems like it's in really good shape unless they had it all painted recently. I don't think so. Nice dark green, 94 green, I think. This trim is different but we'll, we'll get the story on that later. It is a 68, it's got the reflectors, but it has the earlier grill, 67, 66, 65. Okay, and love that. Tom? Okay, bye. All right, now this is a strange breed. Um, if you're looking at it, let's see if we don't spoil the surprise. If you're looking at this from the front, you're like, what, the, what is an 1800 ET? Now this car was built by Bud Hartwell. Oh, hi. There goes Tom and the Jensen. Good seeing you. Wow. If it's lowered, it looks good. Is that lowered, you think? The rear tire? Yeah, maybe just a little bit, huh? I'm not sure how you do that. Just the springs. So this 1800 ET, Bud Hartwell. Yeah. Uh, he passed two Easter's ago at the ripe young age of 95 years old. And he had made this a combination 1800 ES that was converted into a Subaru Brat. Starting from the front. Bullhorn bumpers on an ES. Uh, yeah, J so Jensen styling, a custom grill actually to match the Jensen's, um, the Jensen side trim, the Jensen C pillar, which is actually kind of the B pillar now. There's really no C pillar the way it works. And then on the rear, converted into a truck with the Subaru Brat rear. Whoa! Check out some of the footage from that now. This is a '69. It's a '73 ES. The trim is from a 61 to 64, I think, Jensen. <laughs> I just picked up the rim. It didn't come with a spare tire. Yeah. So I picked up the rim. I have to go get a tire for it. Mechanically all Volvo underneath? Uh, yeah, it's all Volvo. Nice. Not very 
good engine compartment. This can be seen from the, um, I forget what the name of the Cars and Coffee was. There was a Cars and Coffee event, 1,000 to 3,000 cars every weekend in South Orange County. And this car was featured in a video. I'll link that below. It's got bullhorn bumpers in the rear welded into one piece. It has a tow hitch in the rear. Wow. And has been featured in VSA magazine. There's Bud himself. The 1800 to one-off labor of love. Really great work on the body. Uh, and a sliding rear window. Okay. How fun is that? Now this here belonged to Tom Doherty. And Tom passed away recently and this car was acquired by Todd Worthington. Uh, Todd and Luke have a collection of beautiful Volvos and including a 72 164E, which is the last year of the early body styling and the first year of the injection, the best year in my opinion. And he has given this a good home here. And look at this little bit in the back, in the back a uh, crash test dummy. I will say Todd told me that when he arranges his keys for all the cars, um, I think like eight between the household. Um, some of them are really excellent cars. Some of them are very high marks and um, arranging them by what do I feel like driving? And he said, the number one position most if not all the time is my 164. I think that's really great. But this 1800 ES is super clean and it has I think only a couple thousand miles on the engine with a rebuild. So it's a um, gorgeous car. Yeah, it's nice to see it stretch its legs. That's a phrase I'm gonna be using a lot because you know, when you have several old cars like Ivy, I was gonna bring Ivy today, but I forgot the key, or I, did, I brought, the, brought the wrong key. So I ended up uh, trying to start it with Amy, the parts car's key, and uh, that was funny. Oh man, indecent exposure, you're not so showing too. Oh man, you guys didn't know we were all part of a nudist colony. That's the dumbest joke I've made today. Willow green metallic. So if you're interested in a willow green metallic, you're not the first in line, I'll tell you that. It's, it's garnering some attention. So if you do, uh, immediately reach out to Sheldon. 818-404-4489. And Sheldon's great. He's a Volvo enthusiast through and through. Anyway, that was the Volvo Sports America picnic. Great success, lots of good folks. And unfortunately, I've been such a social butterfly. I neglected some of my friends. Sorry I didn't say hi more and chat more, but it was good seeing everybody. And hope you all enjoyed watching this video. Take care. Oh, you did them that way. You didn't use transfer paper. It's extra steps too. I need to take them off and put it back on. It still holds good. Okay. It, it has the, um, yeah, actually, I like your outfit. It's very oh, cute. We're just so happy to see you guys it. almost match. This is great. Dylan, Allie. Happy. Yes. 83. Dude, the center, the center uh, hubcap in the, not hubcap, but the little like wheel cap yeah, in the I rear. Those are the ones that I. Those are from yours? I'm eyeing, I should get those on mine because they're like the newer version. You have the original two license plates, so that's like probably yeah. right at the year that this car came out. Yeah, yeah. That's Close. Like my favorite part about the whole car. Yeah, it has that original plate. That's a cool thing. Overdrive, up the center armrest, rear accessory. Yeah. And the exactly. big old coffin hood in the front with the GL wheels and the GL trim all around. So it's beautiful. There's this, what, two-tone that just showed up? Anyway, I got a jet, but it's been great meeting everybody. Let's say goodbye to the folks at home. Take care, David. Bye. <laughs>